ladies. So you're going to work on your bell ringer. I'm going to give you approximately 15 minutes to get that started. You're only going to answer 7A today. If you finish early before time is up, I want you to come up to the lab counter over here. You can follow me with your eyes. You will have um, several samples. The answer, the answer sheet is here. So you're going to bring the answer sheet, put your name on it. You're going to walk down the row and write down what the name of the um, product is and from where it came. Okay, so you're allowed to touch them. You're not allowed to eat them. Okay? All right. Underline supporting facts. Any words you don't know? Okay. So you'll notice I put up a new strategy. So the one I really want you to focus on is the exclamation point. If there's anything on there that surprised you, write an explanation. So closed reading strategy in my room is really having the students read a piece of informational text and they have to read it for deeper understanding. So the kids are reading an article, um, multiple, the same article, multiple times to get a deeper understanding each time. I'm giving you some more closed reading strategies. So we've really been working on highlighting the main idea, underlining supporting facts. But I really want to call your attention to this explanation point. Because I know the article that you're reading today should give you some information that you don't already know. So if you find anything that really stands out to you, please put an explanation point and you're going to share that with the class once we're done. Okay? All right, thank you. Building interest in this class really has to do with finding something that the students are passionate about. So if I can bring in real fruit that they've never seen before or give them some type of challenge, have them working together, Kids in middle school really need to have like a social aspect of my class so they know when they come in that it's not just going to be sit and, sit and listen to Miss Sullivan talk. It's really going to be an interactive environment. All right, we have 10 seconds. Find to your seat, please. It does not matter if you finish or not. You will have time afterwards. All right, so let's talk about the lab area first. So I want to get some feedback. What did you guys think? What stood out at you? Was it easy or hard? Was there information that you were surprised about? Here's this. You saw a fruit from South Africa. Do you know where I went to get all those fruit? Publix, Publix right? So can you the South Af so Publix has a fruit from South Africa. What else did you guys notice over there? This side. Jeff. Um, I saw an eggplant. You saw an eggplant? Yes. How many else saw an eggplant? Or you don't know what an eggplant is? From Canada. From Canada. In Florida, right? So, I have a story to tell you. Naughty, go ahead. I saw a coconut. You saw a coconut? Where was the coconut from? I'm going to say the Florida Keys. Florida Keys, because you're familiar with that. Did anyone have a different answer for that, for the coconut? What did you have, Alicia? It said Honduras, right? Oh, you yeah. saw a little sticker that said Honduras. That was a product from Honduras. So, here's what surprised me. When I went to go get this um, products for you to look at, because I know last time when we were looking at those maps, some of you were like, what's an artichoke? What's an avocado? I have no idea what you're talking about, Miss Sullivan. So I'm like, oh, that would be a good thing to do. Well, I went to Publix to get all this. What do you think was the one thing that I went in there to get? What was the one thing I wanted to bring here? <laughs> what? <laughs> food. But what particular food do you think I really wanted to bring? Alicia. Not a vegetable. Orange. An orange. An orange from where? Hannah. Florida. An orange from Florida. Guess what? Publix was not selling oranges from Florida. What? How disappointed was I? Can you believe that? Does that make sense to you? So do you have an idea of why that was? I could have asked you for one. So that's actually an interesting statement. I could just ask my neighbor, someone local, for one. But do you guys have any suggestions of why Publix was not selling the Florida orange? Nadia. Because like there's less orange trees in Jacksonville. That's actually a good hypothesis. Less orange trees in Jacksonville. Anybody have something else? Hannah. Because usually if you get something shipped from another country, it's cheaper. So shipping other countries, it is cheaper. OK. Anything else? One more. Micah? They make money off the orange and sell them. So they make money off of oranges and sell them and buy oranges from yeah. somewhere else? They, they make the oranges and then they sell them. Okay, so getting oranges from somewhere else. So today we're going to 
talk about that. And at the end, I'm going to revisit this question and see if your opinions changed. Okay, and then I'm going to tell you what I think. All right, so we're going to look at what we studied last class. So when we first started, we were talking about agriculture and its importance to the, to the entire world. And you guys came up with, well, there's three main things. Feeding a growing population, providing jobs, and protecting the environment. Then we drilled it down to how is it important to the United States of America. And we talked about improving quality of life for Americans, producing a more nutritious food, a more affordable food, so that we're not spending all our income on food, we're able to afford things such as education and health care and your internet and your clothes and your activities that you do. So we have more opportunities. We have different job opportunities. Um, agriculture also helps our country provide raw materials for things that we need. I'm looking out now and I see a lot of cotton that you're wearing. Okay, we're using a lot of lumber in this class, so all that is tied to agriculture. And we talked about its percentage of what we contribute to the actual national economy. Next slide. So now we're going to drill down to our state. So here's a picture, a model, actually a photograph from outer space. Who can tell me what this landmark right there is? Just curious. Who knows what that is? Anybody? Casey. This is Florida. Do you know what this little circle right here represents? Right here in South Florida, what do, you, what do you think it is? That is Lake Okeechobee. All right, so here's the essential question that you have to be able to answer by the end of the lesson. What economic impact does agriculture have on the state of Florida? So just because I'm teaching it, I don't want you just to take my word for it. I want you to be skeptical. I want you to have the frame of mind to be skeptical. Do you really think that agriculture is important to our state? So I'm going to give you 30 seconds for you to turn and talk to your lab partner to see what you currently know, because you're going to have to answer this as a team at the end of the class. So on the count of now. So the essential question for every lesson plan is really give students a focus of what they should be trying to answer after they get new information. So we always open a lesson by introducing the essential question. We always give them evidence to back up and supporting details so that students are successful at answering that. And at the end of the lesson, we go back and we review that essential question to see if kids can articulate both um, verbally and in writing that they've actually met the goal for that lesson. Um, who wants to share what you guys talked about? How important do you think it is? Here's So it helps people get food. So in the state of Florida, so you're talking about it helps Floridians. Yes. Azrael and Christian, what about you guys? What did you guys say? There will be a lot less food, a lot less food, a lot less jobs. Okay, so if Florida just like the sea level rose and Florida no longer exists, how much the country actually um, depends on our, our state? Is that what yes. you so it would be too good for Floridians. Nadia. To help with tourism? Well, it doesn't help. Well, it might help with tourism if we want to do ecotourism, where people come to our state because we have unique ecosystems, part of that being our farms. But tourism is one of the, uh -huh. if not the major industry in Florida, and then agriculture. All right, so I'm going to show you a video about, that's going to introduce you to Florida agriculture. And I want you to think about everything that you see, and I want you to share with me afterwards what really stood out with you. What did you not know, but that video taught you, okay, about Florida agriculture. Florida agriculture has a story to tell. Florida is perhaps best known for its theme parks, cosmopolitan cities, and tropical weather. But all of that abundant sunshine is producing so much more. The same climate that attracts tourists all year round is also a major advantage to Florida agriculture, allowing farmers to produce 280 different types of commodities. Agriculture is the state's second largest industry, and it contributes close to $200 billion a year. Take 30 seconds to talk to your neighbor about what stood out.
about families owning farms together, like them farming together, and then so them not having families as fun, like they just do it by themselves. All right, so let's share as a group. Who wants to share what your team came up with? What did you, what stood out? I didn't know that they were that as small as they are. The farms that we currently have are as small as they are. So and Florida that they're mostly is, family owned. That's right. Florida is, I mean, I met the governor recently, and I heard the financial report for the state of Florida. And he was saying, they were talking about how Florida is so unique because our state is made off of the small business, a small farm. So most of our farms aren't these big productions. They are family owned farms. Okay? Azriel. Either one of us knew what sugar king was. Neither one of you knew what sugar king was. Did you see a picture of it in the video? So you got to see that. So that's something you can look at yourself. Have you ever had natural sugar cane? No. Sounds like a field trip to me. I have to go to the sugar cane field. Hannah. Um, what stood out to me was that, like, it's just even like the small farms impact a large community all through Florida and like our economy. And that like these 50 acre things in smaller are impacting us such in a big way like it is and guess what's going to happen to all of you today so i am going to promote you from student to a citrus farmer you are going to have your own company you and your lab partner are going to create a company some of you are going to go bankrupt i'm pretty sure you have to have a really good name and you're going to use your team name in our exit slip kahoot game so make sure you come up with a really cool name you're going to have to, I'm going to, I'm going to start you out with about 4,000 trees to grow, but your job is to be able to tell me exactly how much space you're going to need to grow those. So you don't want to, you want to make sure that you're doing some research to make sure that you're not taking too much land, right? Because then that's real expensive. And a lot of people won't like, want a new farm to take a more natural environment. You're going to have a lot of problems with PR problems with that, so you don't want that. You certainly don't want too much land because you want to get as much money as that 4,000 trees that I'm going to give you to grow. Okay? So start thinking about that right now. All right, so let's take a look. So as we go over this, I want you to look at your interactive notebook. Remember, on the right-hand side is our guided notes. Here's your bell ringer. Did anyone have questions about that? Everyone understood? Was there anything that you learned from reading that article this morning that's related to what we're doing now? What did you learn that you had no idea? Here's them. That uh, in drier places, the peels on the oranges and stuff are thicker. Okay, so in drier places, such as in the other maybe two different locations, what were those two locations? Okay. California and Arizona. California and Arizona also grow oranges. And their oranges are very different from a Florida orange because there's a variable that changes those. So the oranges on the west coast have a really thick peel. How many of you like those? The real big ones with a big thick peel on them? So, and that's caused by that weather variable of being a drier climate. And over here in Florida, we have a more humid climate. So our oranges have a very thin peel. Do you think that has something to do with why you couldn't find oranges in public? You're thinking about that. All right, so turn to your guided notes. The benchmark we are working on and of course, you're filling this in as we go over this today. So, we're going to describe the importance of ag on the state scale. You're going to distinguish the major or agricultural commodities or products, this would be a synonym if you wanted to use, of Florida. So, we're going to go over this information. So, as we do that, please fill that out, read your major. I use guided notes in my classroom to deliver instruction. I don't want the t kids so interested in copying the information. I really want them to listen to the information and have a discussion about the information. So guided notes are basically the presentation with a few keywords missing that the kids fill in as we go through the presentation. 47,500 farms produce nearly 300 different commodities. The video said 280, that is near 300. Okay. 9 million acres of our state is currently, think about that, 9 million acres are currently dedicated to farming. Agriculture employs 2 million Floridian workers. 
and brings in $104 billion to our state economy. Looking at this model, this map of Florida, take a look at that and raise your hand and tell me what, are you, what can you learn from looking at this map? What does this help you understand? Nadia. Wait just a second, Nadia, I can't hear you. Say it again. Mostly everybody has fish. Mostly everybody has fish. Where exactly do you see the fish? She Florida. circled the something. So what does that mean? Hmm. Florida. And like Florida. Mostly like the more present with the water. Near the water. Yeah. So this would be on the perimeter of our state, right? Mm -hmm. On the coast of our state. Okay, so there's a lot of aquaculture. Obviously, we are in the aquaculture lab, and we're going to really hit aquaculture when we get to um, that in our animal sciences. What else do you notice about this map, Hannah? Um, that all of the oranges are, like, near the south. All the oranges are near the south? Do you think that's another reason why I couldn't get an orange for an orange here in Jacksonville? Anything else you learned from that map by looking at that? Nathan. That we grow a large variety of fruits, vegetables, and yes. of everything. We grow a large variety. Anything else? Okay. There are a lot of nurseries here. Okay, certainly a lot of, a lot of nurseries, especially here in Central Florida. Anything else? Is there a key up here that helps you understand anything, Alicia? What does the key tell us? Uh, it helps tell you what kind of soil that you have, so depending on what you can grow and do there. Right, so the key is telling us there's different types of soil in Florida. Okay, you think that has an impact on where things grow in our state? What kind of soil do we have here in Duval County? Raise your hand. What kind of soil do we have in Duval County? Casey? Sand. Sand, right? So up here in the panhandle there, you can see there's tree and forestry that grows a little bit better um, in there. So next slide, please. So we have some bragging rights. And we're going to write this down so you guys can remember. So why should you be proud of your state? Obviously, we're number one in oranges and grapefruits. Some of you might decide to be an orange farmer or a grapefruit farmer. You might decide your farm to be tangerine or limes. Yes. Not football. Just, she's, she's, she's picking on me. She says it's not number one in football. All right, it's on now. All right, so. Look at all these other commodities besides orange and grapes that's growing in our state, and we are first in production. We are second in production for bell peppers, strawberries, and tangerines. Some of you might choose to grow tangerines. And third place in honey. My favorite type of honey, by the way, is tupelo. It's really, really good. You can get it at the farmer's market or the side of the river. You can't get it at Publix, but you can get it at the side of the Aquaculture. Obviously, we are really focused on aquaculture in our coastal science class. First is tropical fish, such as you see in this tropical fish tank over here, is the number one commodity worth about 27.2 million by the statistics of 2012. Again, you should never just take my word for data. You should be skeptical and get some type of evidence or source, a credible source to back that up. We are ranked among the top 12 in 2012 for fresh seafood production. Look at how many pounds that we bring in. 93 million are harvested in our state. Dockside, that is worth $205 million. $205 million. Human consumption, so all those fish sticks you guys eat. $24.1 million, which includes not only freshwater fish, but saltwater fish. Clams, oysters, shrimp, prawns, alligators, and turtle. People eat gator. How many of you have ever eaten gator? Raise your hand. All right. How many of you have ever eaten turtle soup? I only eat the chocolate turtles. I don't think that's the same thing, but I don't think I can handle turtle soup. I don't know. Ornamental sales. $35.5 million. So if you want to grow up to have your own fish shop, Okay, or you want to work in the garden center that sells koi and buy koi from our farm here. $35.5 million. And this is pretty impressive. Florida fishermen catch 84% of the 
the nation's supply of grouper, pompano, mullet, stone crab, shrimp, mackerel, 100% of spiny lobster comes from our state, and 97% of stone crabs are harvested in Florida. So I think Florida has a very important position nationally, globally, and certainly to our state. Agriculture um, has a large impact on the quality of life for Floridians. When you are done with that, I'm going to give you a moment to introduce you to Captain Citrus. You have the handout. The handout goes right next to your interactive notes. Here is your challenge. Okay. Glue that in onto your left hand side. So you're going to use some of this information today. Use that creative brain of yours and solve a real world problem. You're going to create your farm. You're going to design the way that farm is laid out. You're going to say, okay, how much space do I need to properly cultivate 4,000 trees of your choice? I don't think you're going to get my, I haven't already, you can't take this name. So I decided I'm going to be a line farmer. And my name of mine is Awesome Line Farmer. So you can't take that. You can choose anything else, but Awesome Line Farmer belongs to my farm. Now I'm going to model that for you in a moment, okay? So I'm going to have you come back to your group here. Thank you for coming up to me. All right. Captain Citrus is actually a marketable icon that the state of Florida used to use for orange juice. So this is where you're at. And here's your challenge. I did not expect for you to be able to answer this and complete this today. I do not expect you to be able to do this without struggling. Okay? It is meant to challenge you. I am not going to give you all the answers. You're going to have to think those things through. You're going to have to try things. You're going to have to discuss with your partner. So your first decision is to come up with a name. So on your paper, where it says what your name is your farm, I'm going to give you two minutes to discuss Two things. What are you growing? Grapefruit, tangerines, limes, or oranges? What are you going to choose to grow? And get the name. So come up with two minutes. I'll time it. So you, your arch lettuce partner. What do you think? So that's the beauty of him being absent. You can choose your own name now, right? And you get to choose it for him. But you can also work with the group next to you, but you still have to come up with your own name for when he comes back. You, hey, there is no rules as long as it's not offensive. I can say slime line might not be very good for a company yeah because your job is okay. to create something catchy one. to attract yeah. your customers and your investors okay, okay? your job is to make yeah, your I'll, company we'll name it gain okay. more money than any of the other companies that are starting here. you now know what you're going to produce whether it's <coughs> which commodity you're going to grow you also have to decide your team name your farming now the hard part is the math but I'm going to help you. So if you want to take notes, you can. I'm going to explain to you exactly what we're asking for. So it says, welcome new citrus farmer. We are excited to have your farm join 10,000 citrus growers in the state of Florida. The Department of Agriculture has been informed that you have 4,000 trees. And yes, you have to keep all 4,000 alive and you need to cultivate them and grow them to their maximum potential. However, we do not know what kind of citrus you grow, but now you've decided. We want to make sure you have the proper acreage for your success. Please use the information below and fill out the proper request form. So here's some important information. If it was me, I would circle or highlight which one applies to me so I don't make a mistake. 
So spacing requirements, if you're growing grapefruit, raise your hand if you chose grapefruit. All right, grapefruit farmers. You guys are gonna need 20 foot by 25 feet per tree. And you have 4,000 trees. Okay, building a lesson that integrates science, reading, and math takes planning. You need to pay attention to the detail of what you're actually wanting the kids to accomplish while still tapping into a real world problem-based experience. So converting the children from a student at Mayport Middle to actual Florida citrus farmers was the perfect avenue for them to apply those skills because truly that's our goal. We want to create students that leave our school with employable skills so they can go out into the world, world market. All right, so oranges and tangerines, raise your hand. If you're orange or tangerine, couple of you, you guys need a 15 foot by 20 foot. Your line farmers, raise your hand. Couple line farms, you guys only need a 12 by 20 foot area per tree. So you have to tell me how many you need for the number of acres you're requesting. So please be advised, you will need to leave you will need to leave a 20 foot perimeter around your farm so you can drive your tractor. You also need to leave 20 feet in between the rows. So the only requirement is your trees have to be in a row. How many row is up to you? How many trees per row is up to you? It does have an effect on how much land you're going to need, so you and your partner really need to think about that. Okay, so you're going to use math here to solve a real agricultural issue. So let me show you. This space up here, I've given you to do a couple of things. So you can use this if you want to, to work out your area per tree. You can use this to make your own um, icon or emblem for your company. So I'd love to use your own logo. So that's just your workspace. So here's an example of what your product should look like when you're done. Okay? Remember, one acre has 43,560 square feet. So here is my awesome line farm. And yes, you can't use that title. Let me scroll this down a little bit. So I made a title. And the first thing that you guys got to think about is, how many rows, how many trees per row? That's your variable. So my awesome line farm has one tree. So please don't think you can use my data and multiply it by 4,000 and expect to have the right answer. I'm not giving you that. You're going to have to think. All right, so here's an example. Well, I know I'm looking for area, and I know the formula length times width, and I know that it's a two-dimensional measurement, so it's going to be feet I know one acre is 43,560 square foot. I used graph paper and I drew out what my farm looks like. So I made up, because it made sense to me, that each of these squares is equal to four foot. Now you have a farm of 4,000. I don't know if my scale is going to work for you. It worked for me though, because I only have one. So that'd be something that you two need to discuss. So here is the area for this one little tree that I need, a 12 foot by 20 foot. Three times four, five times four, gives me the right exact amount, not too little, not too much, exactly what I need. Because remember, as farmers, we have to use our resources wisely, right? Because we have to protect the Florida environment. We can't convert all of it just because we want to. We have to save some of that. So we're going to be really conscientious about how much land I want to use. I also know that I need a 20-foot perimeter around my farm so I can drive my tractor in circles around my one little line farm. I have one little line. So length is equal to 60. So here's 20, here's 20, and here's 20. So add them all together to get my length. My width is 20 plus 12 plus 20 is 52. I multiply those together, I get 3,120 feet. My conversion factor is one acre is equal to 43,560 feet. I take my number, divide it by the conversion factor to get out how many acres that I need, which is less than one for me. You might need a little bit more than that, okay? How many of you are a little scared because it sounds hard? Awesome. So you have to struggle. 
So if you need help, I just want you to do, I'm going to give you approximately um, 15 minutes for the two of you to start thinking this out. Thinking about how many rows, how many trees per row, what do you think the math is, and get a plan. And then after that 15 minutes, if you guys feel comfortable with that, then I want you to stop there. We'll work on it next class and you can go finish your, your vegetable ID. Okay? Raise your hand if you have any questions for the good of the group. All right, get on. It can be anybody. You're just getting ideas, right? You're just getting ideas. Take your work and because they might get ideas from you too. How do you think we did it wrong? I don't think we divided right. Wait, how did you I divide, didn't divide it? Right. I just did it each number and so half. So we're dividing by two, right? Yes. So that number is two. So you put one up there. Lessons that have problem-based learning gives the children an opportunity to apply the skills that they're learning in a lesson into a real scenario. So today we use citrus farmers and having students calculate the number, the amount of area they would need to cultivate 4,000 trees. And so as you saw in the lesson, they struggled with that. So what I've typically found is students will know the skill but don't know how to apply it to real world situations. So it really does fill the gap to help, st help students leave here with the actual skill to apply in the real world. That's how I divided it right. All right. So let's put your pencils down for a moment. Take a deep breath. So frustration level from one to five. Five if you're like, this is super hard. Or one. I got it. Five. Show me. Do I have a ten? Do I have some tens? One over here. Back row is doing good. Five. Three. All right. Cool. All right. So tell me. What was the hardest part and what have you started like, okay, I didn't know this, but now I do know. Or this is what we did consider at first, but now we've considered this now. Jeff. I thought to myself the worst part was going to be my name. The worst part was going to be your name? Yeah, That's because like what we have to name our farm. It was going to be difficult. That's a we big decision. That's a big decision. It is. But you said you thought it was going to be the worst part, but that's not it? Yeah, but it ended up being simple. That was the well, simple part? The What's the hard part? Um, your rows? Jared. I, yeah, same with me. I think the rose is the hardest part. Because I thought I was good at math, but I don't think I am. You thought you were good at math? So here's where you really have to use math, right? So a farmer needs to figure out how many rows he's going to need for how many trees and what's the best way to design that so we can use the least amount of property. I Nadia. said good name. Because, like, you need a good name for, like, customers to attract you. I know. And, like... Like as a start, like if you do a startup company, like you need something good because like you want like a first impression kind of thing. That's true. I have no idea That's what true. it is. That's true. Alicia. Four thousand, and just divide it by you know like a common factor of it, and then do your rows like that, and then times it by twenty, see how much you need in between on the outside. So that was easy. I agree with that. And that's what we did. So that's what you did? All right, so when we come back next class, you guys are going to think about this over the next day and a half, and then we're going to come back. You're going to attack this again with fresh eyes. It is okay to talk with each other to see what other farmers are doing. That's called a cooperation, right? So we get together with other farmers that are having the same issues. You guys, what are you doing? So we share ideas for that. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to transition to Kahoot. We're going to see how much you actually absorb today, and then we'll start our dismissal procedure. Um, I want you to work as a team, and your name, I want it to be your farm name. So put in your farm name, and the two of you are going to work as a team. If I don't know what you have to do right Yes. If you don't, if you haven't decided, just put what you you think you're gonna do. Uh, 
I'll abbreviate it. Yes. Hold on to your answer sheet. If you have not finished the vegetable ID, that'll be available to you next class. You guys are working as a team, so you just need one for your name. You're a corporation now. Yes. Check on what? Uh, yeah, you can go take a quick look, as long as you've logged on. So I have Old Man Jenkins Farm, GG Farm. I'm going to give you about two minutes to log in, and then we're going to play for the farm. Bob the Great, love it, although we're citrus farmers. Grapefruit, I get it, I get it. Cool name, cool name. So have three teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need seven more teams up. Chicken Alfredo. With our orange. Runt, the rut farm. Oh, running with our fruit through the farm. That was your name? Running through the farm with our oranges. All right, you guys ready? No. Quickly, please. All right, if you have not logged on, you can continue to do so, but we're going to get started. Here we go. Here we go. Tutti Confruity. Here we go. Good luck, good luck, good luck. It's okay, we all put the wrong one. What's the game pin? Six eight three two eight two. It's okay. Just, get, just jump in when you can. There's only three questions. So eight of you, eight teams, if you got that correct, awesome. Chicken Alfredo. Are we going to get off that? No, it's just for me to measure what you guys comprehended. Ah, two groups, one out of five. One out of a hundred, really? One out of five hundred people? One out of five. You can if you want to. Last question. We'll see which farm's on top and we're done. All right. All right. So who do we think? So who do you think is fastest running through the farm with our oranges? That is correct. The 2,718. Let's give them a three on three. One, two, and three. All right. Good job. All right. So take a look at your plan and make sure you and your partner agree on what your next steps are and I'm going to start your exit song. If, um, with our agri-science class I like to use an exit ticket that I can grade and get immediate feedback. So some of our classes will have 20, some of us will have 47. So in this class the kids really buy into Kahoot so I gave them three questions, one of this is an essential question, three questions that they could answer. And when they're done, it's like a game they get to play. So I get immediate data. I can download that. I can see which kids answered which. And it gives me an overall percentage of feel for the class of which kids got the content and which one didn't. 
So how I use that is next class period, I'll go back and look at that data and say, okay, did the majority of the students get it? If they did, we're ready to move on and build on that information. If they didn't, then I know I need to go back and revisit it. I can look, I can drill down to the individual student. I can go back there and say, okay, you didn't understand this. Let's go back and review that and I can remediate in small groups.